not to turn up just like the Labour Party were. But because of the mood, because of the situation in the streets here in the ghettos, they reversed their, they reversed their minds and came out with the people. I'd like to talk about the 1970s when the Labour Party were in power and the National Front fascists were marching through the streets and terrorising the black and Asian population. When the, when the Nazis, the National Front, met to march through Lewisham in a march against black muggers, so-called, 6,000 police were employed by the Labour Party government to stop the anti-fascists from halting their march. However, again, the strength of the people, tens of thousands of us turned out and we smashed the fascists off the streets. So 1977 was also a great victory and we actually came into physical confrontation with the Nazis and we fought them. They had out their heavy mob, but we fought them because we were the people, because we were so angry and we'd had enough of it. And then we went on to clash with the police. It was the first time, it was the very first time that riot shelters were employed in mainland Britain. And the story then continues right up to 1981 and the Brixton riots. I'd like to also say that the Martin Webster, the head of the Nazi National Front, had a one-man march several years later through Hyde in Manchester. Three to four thousand police were there, deployed to defend his so-called right to march and to arrest anybody that attempted to oppose his so-called march. This is the reality of Labour. Do not be fooled by any of this Labour crap. They are the people that nurture the fascists. It's under Labour that fascism thrives. I'd also like to say as well, of course, that we have had the EDL scum attempting to march through the streets here. And each time we have mobilised the population here, the Asian population, the Bangladeshi population in particular, we have mobilised to keep them off the streets. And three times we have been successful in halting their progress here. Should they come again, we will do the same. But let me remind you this, that over 130 anarchists and anti-fascist militants, including local locals, were arrested a few years ago when the EDL attempted to march through. I'd like to say that the Labour Party, that the Labour Party, the left and the police collaborated in this mass arrest of anarchists and local youth. Do not forget that. And the fight still goes on here. The fascist scum may have been wiped off of the streets here, but they are still around. And now we are fighting another fight. Instead of ethnic cleansing, what the Nazis have, we have social cleansing. Where they're moving everybody out of this area. All the working class people, whether they are white, whether they are black, or whether they are Asian, are being moved out by the Labour Party in order to erect, the, erect those disgusting monstrosities you see down the end of the street. Those yuppie droves where the international rich are moving in. We have people sleeping on the streets here. We have 20,000 people on the housing waiting list. And yet, of these 5,000 luxury flats that are being built within a five minute walk of here, most of them will remain empty. A speculative and speculative ventures for overseas investors. So the fight against fascism continues, but the fight against the social cleansing of London by Labour Party councils co continues. And I hope that the fight against fascism, racism and all that dirt and filth, I hope that we can mobilise people to preserve our communities against this social cleansing. And I find it absolutely disgusting the people from the Labour Party are here. The very party, the very party, the very party that is responsible for this social cleansing. And it's still going on here. I support the, four, the, the, the E15 women. We support everybody that fights against the social cleansing of working class London by the middle class Labour councillors who hate us, who hate our guts, who think that we're scum. But let me tell you this, 
the white working class and the Bangladeshi working class here, every time, and the black working class, every time the fascists march, we always come out en masse to fight them and to kick them off the streets and also to fight the police that protect them if necessary. And I have no qualms about it. Wherever they march in London, and particularly they march here, there will always be thousands of us here. And despite, the, and despite what the Labour Party says, and the Labour Party always collaborate with the police, when they're in government they send out thousands of police to, to contain us, to prevent us from stopping the Nazis from marching on the streets. And I, I really am absolutely amazed that people have got such short memories that we could tolerate the Labour Party in the front of this march, the Labour Party speakers over there spouting out their garbage, whilst at the same time, the very party, remember, that took us to war twice, the very party that put into motion the Thatcher, the Thatcher agenda of destroying the working class and so forth. I have no sympathy for the Labour Party, I have no sympathy for the left, the leftist scum that support them. So, so remember, the fight is against fascism. That's what we're commemorating here. That's what this glorious and brilliant mural depicts. But also, the fight is against the police, the fascists in uniform, the racists in uniform, the racist state of Britain, the institutionalized racism, every part of the state, which is just the same, whoever is running it, whether it's Labour or Conservative or a coalition or Uncle Tom Cobbley and all. So I say this, no to fascism, but also no to the Labour Party. I don't care if Jeremy Corbyn's in charge. It's just an illusion. We are living in a one-party state. Labour will never be elected. We have got to be prepared for revolutionary upheaval. And any upheaval is revolutionary upheaval. We have to reclaim our streets because I don't want to be here in another 10 years' time if I'm still alive commemorating the 90th anniversary of the cable Cable Street Battle, and then the whole area is surrounded by glass monstrosities and yuppie drones. So let us cease, let us cease back the streets. We have thousands of people sleeping in the open. There are tens of thousands of empty properties. That's what we should be doing politically. No way for the Labour Party to get elected in four years' time, which they won't. But seize buildings, seize the initiative. Take the fight onto the streets. We need to smash down the entire state, not just the fascists. The, the monarchy, the House of Lords, the whole rotten institutions. We need to destroy them and we need to have a revolution in this country. Something that's about 150 years overdue, but better late than never is what I say. So there, uh, thank you very much for listening to my spouting. <laughs> Fascism. Long live the kids on the streets when they fight against when they fight against the police, and long live anybody that comes out to oppose fascism, no matter what circumstances. And well done to them, even if they are in the left or the Labour Party. But basically, it is it is it is the masses of the people, the ordinary people, the, the residents of these areas that smash fascism, not the left, and not even our anarchists. For the ordinary people. Thank you.